Hello again students and welcome to another GCSE computer science theory lesson. This video is going to be on unit 4, types of software. But before we get into software, we need to define the term hardware. So hardware is any physical component on your computer system. And those physical components, they include um, the parts that are actually built into your computer tower, such as the processor and the hard drive and the motherboard. But that also includes things that you would plug into it, such as the computer monitor, the keyboard and a computer mouse. So software is anything that controls hardware. So any software code that you write, any applications, any programs that you download, that is all considered software. Here is an example of some software that I have made. And you're probably thinking to yourself, um, how does this control the hardware? Well, we are controlling hardware in this example. In this situation, we have got some code that is changing the pixels on your monitor. So we are changing hardware. We are changing the the monitor hardware, we're changing the pixel colors. So um, for the exam, you need to be aware that software is broadly broken down into two categories. And I know this seems a little bit counterintuitive as we get into it, and it doesn't really make any sense in some places, and there's lots of exceptions to the rules, but don't worry about it too much. Just stick with my guidance that I'm about to give you. So application software, it performs a task for the user. Um, so an example is a word processor, so something like Microsoft Word, or any kind of presentation package like PowerPoint, or even a video game. So um, weirdly enough, you could consider Fortnite as application software. It performs a task for the user. It performs the task of letting the user playing a video game. So application software is any software that is for people to use that it benefits human beings to use it. System software, on the other side of things, it is a task that is for your system. So a task that your computer is gonna find the most useful. So for example, um, a disk defragmenter tool or the disk cleanup tool, those aren't things that the user is going to find particularly useful. Like me as a human being, I don't need to defragment my brain. I don't, need to, I don't need to clean up any old files inside my mind. Um, these are things exclusively for computers. Also, Windows 10, so the whole operating system that we're using, that is also regarded as system software. Um, you can find examples of system software by just by going into your start menu. And it can usually be found in administrative tools or... Oh, we got it. Uh, Windows system. There you go. Windows system, system software. So things like control panel. There is a little bit of confusion that can occur. You could argue that something like disk cleanup is both system software and application software in the sense that deleting files isn't just useful for the computer, but it is also useful for a person. So like if you had confidential files that you wanted to delete, that's going to be useful for a person and therefore you could argue it's application software. It's a little bit of a wishy-washy subject. Um, my advice is don't think too hard about it, just accept that you have to remember these two things for the exam. And generally speaking, go with an example that is definitely application software. And if something is more system software than application software, then we just call it system software. OK, and to muddy the waters even more, there are two different types of system software. So system software is an umbrella term there are actually two subtypes of system software that you should be aware of. So utility software are things like the disk defragmenter and disk cleanup. And then the other type is operating systems. So Windows is an example, Android and the iOS that you get on your, um, your Apple smartphones. Um, there's also other operating systems out there such as Linux, Minux, um, FreeBSD, um, Oh, there's this really weird one called Temple OS. Don't try that, by the way. Don't Google Temple OS. I'm not really sure why I put this in the in the slideshow. Um, may, maybe wait till you're in sixth form before you look that up because it's a very complex topic. And the person who made this operating system was very seriously unwell and had some very crazy beliefs on things. So just a word of advice for you. Don't Google Temple uh, Temple OS. OK, so um, talking about the operating system in more detail, what does the operating system do? Well, 
the operating system manages RAM on your computer. Um, it manages input-output devices. When we say input-output devices, we mean things like computer mice, keyboards, printers, anything that plugs into a USB port. It manages applications. And when we say manages applications, we can uninstall them and install them. Let's have a look. Let's have an example of this in Windows. Here we go. So there you go. Look, I can just install or uninstall any of my programs here. It manages security. Uh, when we say manages security, operating systems don't normally come with antivirus software. So when we talk about managing security, we mean it handles things like user accounts. So like, for example, if I tried to um, run command prompt in Windows as an administrator, it's going to come up with a little security warning, which I'm not sure you can see on this recording because it's blocked. And finally, the operating system, it allocates tasks to the CPU. Now, let me try and give you a practical demonstration of this. So if you press Control Shift Escape on a Windows computer, you get something called the Task Manager. And it will tell you everything that's running on your computer. So we can see here, this is everything that is currently running inside my computer's memory. So we've got about 900 megabytes being used. And at the moment, my processor, about 4% of its power is being used at the moment. And if we click on the details tab, we can see things in more detail. So at the moment, we can see that um, the software that I'm using to record this video is taking up nearly 150 kilobytes, sorry, 150,000 kilobytes. And we can also see which ones are taking priority on the processor. So as we can see, um, the recording studio that I'm using is taking second priority on the processor. This system idle process, thingy the jiggy. Um, I'm no expert in Microsoft Windows, but I should imagine that is something to do with some of the really low level and essential essential functions of the operating system. Um, and just one more thing to clarify, um, just want to give you an overview of what on earth RAM is. Um, RAM are things that you've currently got open on your computer, so things that you're currently using. So for example, um, this program is open, it is inside my RAM at the moment, and I'll show you in the task manager. Where is it? Example, there we go, example.exe. We see it's using nearly uh, two megabytes of RAM here. But if I close the program, it is no longer inside my computer's memory. 